Hey there everyone, welcome to the next part of my uh, little video talk on radios. We're going to start to get a little bit more advanced I'm going to, in this little video we'll look at um, the radio protocols, we'll talk about you know the standard protocol, SBUS, CPPM and have a look at telemetry. Okay, we'll start off with the standard protocol and that's pretty much what all tank controllers these days use um, and you know planes and all that sort of stuff. Okay, so you have your receiver. Now your receiver will have X number of outputs and this, well in this case this is an 8 channel receiver, 6 channel receiver, whatever, but all basically the same. On each line you'll have a separate signal line for each of the channels and then on that line this is what happens. Every After every uh, predetermined time period there is a pulse. Okay, now your tank controller or your servo is will be listening on this line and it'll detect the pulse and it'll measure that width. Now depending on that width it tells the servo where to be or your tank controller what speed to be at. Okay, so for example, you know, if that pulse was 150 US microseconds, um, then the servo knows to be in the neutral position. So about 150 is neutral, uh, then your limits go down to 100 and 200. It can be, go either side. So, as I said, on each channel there'll be an output and then there'll be a pulse. Now your servo or your tank controller board is listening to all these signals and then measuring these pulses and then acting appropriately. So, you know, for, again, for most of the controller boards on the market today, that's a fairly big area of space you need on your board if you want to take in all of those lines. Okay, so I think the future, and it's been led with quadcopters, is to move to a more efficient way of sending the information from a receiver to a main control board. Okay, that's great for planes because each little servo is its own little controller and each little servo needs to be separately supplied with power. So this method will probably be around for a long while because running wires off here to each of your little servos in your plane is a good idea. So the next method that most people came up with is combined PPM, okay, where we have one line of signal, so just one signal line, and then there's a series of pulses. So rather than predetermined time, one pulse, and then the next pulse, you'll have a predetermined time, then you'll have a pulse representing channel one, a bit more time than a pulse representing channel two, and so on, channel three, channel four, channel five, channel six. Eight. Typically, this only goes up to channel 8. So CPPM is usually only goes to 8 channels, but it's all down on one line. Okay, so when you have a... Uh, I'm sure new tank controllers will be coming onto the market that will use both SBUS and CPM, and the main reason for that is because it makes it simple. You, know, you only need one line in from your receiver into your control board. It means your control board can be a little bit smaller and more compact. Happening, of course, now a lot with quadcopters because it's very important with quadcopters to, re you know, to reduce the amount of uh, board, reduce the amount of weight. So quadcopters these days tend to be using CPPM or SBUS, which is our next thing. But um, again, with CPPM, this is important. Um, you have it's still one signal, and then you have to have this time pulse, and your software needs to measure these pulses as it goes along, but the main thing is it is just one wire. Similarly, also one wire, the next protocol you'll hear about is SBUS. Now SBUS is a little bit differently. It's a serial communication. So you need to have a microcontroller reading the output from your receiver. And it's sent as digital information, hexadecimal information, um, so again you know, your microcontroller will get this message and then it, from this message it will determine, okay, channel 1 is this, channel 2 is that, channel 3 is that. Very efficient means of sending information. Now, here is, I mean, the differences, okay? 
Here is a full, this receiver can spit out 16 channels of XBus information, 16 channels. Okay, compare that to the size of an eight channel receiver. Okay, so this is certainly the future. This is uh, one of my favorite SBUS CPPM controllers, receivers, sorry, because it outputs both. Okay, and my new products will be using receivers like this that output both CPPM and SBUS. Okay, here is the uh, CPPM output. As you can see, it's just the one wire. You have one signal wire, so all the information from the receiver is being sent down this wire. And then you have, of course, red for positive supply and black for ground. So you have your power supply and your signal line, and that's all you need to plug into your tank control board is that. Okay, much less space. So that's a very quick rundown on your standard protocol, your CPPM, and your and your S bus. It'll be the same for S bus. Um, that's the S bus line. So you plug that in. You know, it's just one input line into your control board, but 16 channels of information. Next, I want to talk about telemetry. We want to know about telemetry and on like FR Sky products, uh, the telemetry protocol is on S port. I don't know what it is on other stuff. What telemetry basically is, is you have sensors that you can put in, outside and around your tank. Now, I have a couple of sensors outside. Um, I'll stop the video shortly and go out and uh, grab them. The reason they're outside is because one of the sensors you can get is a GPS. Um, and it won't, be, it won't pick up in here, so I've thrown it outside. Now, telemetry comes back to your radio. So again, this is why your radio choice is important. If you want telemetry with your radio, um, it will need to be built in. So hopefully I'll bring this up here and I'll just try and focus in on the screen there. And you can see one of my telemetry screens. You can see from the receivers outside, I've got my GPS coordinates. So anyone who wants, really hates me that much, there's my coordinates. So you can um, program your cruise missile and it'll come and uh, will destroy my back patio. Maybe I shouldn't have put that up there. Anyhow, so that's my GPS coordinates. Down here you'll see two, um, we've got V1 and V2, and this is why I think is very important, especially if you're moving up to using LiPo batteries. As you may well know, that a LiPo battery, you should never put it down past 3.3 volts per cell. So, and you can see V1 of my two cell out there is 3.81, and the other cell is at 3.81 as well. So, very handy thing to have telemetry. Uh, especially for your monitoring of your battery. So you can have funky things, as I said, like GPS, not really important for your tanks. Battery information is somewhat critical. And if I can find the screen, no. Uh, okay, let's try and find the screen. I've also got some temperature sensors out there. So it's a nice, warm, if you're watching this in the Northern Hemisphere, well... <laughs> Bad luck. We have a lovely warm 31 degrees Celsius here. That's Celsius, everyone, not Fahrenheit. 31 degrees Celsius here in Brisbane at the moment. Um, and that information is all being sent down from the telemetry sensors out on the patio. So I will just pause this video here and run out and grab those sensors and we'll continue on. Okay, back, and just to quickly round off this video, um, just to finish off with these telemetry. Again, this whole video series is about, you know, taking into account what you want from a radio. So when it comes time to get your radio, um, you know, whether the telemetry is important to you or not, uh, maybe something to consider. Here, again, um, I use FR Sky. No reason you shouldn't couldn't use any other brand or whatever i just happen to be it happens to be my favorite okay so we have uh, a sensor here which is monitoring our cell levels and then how the s port system works is just daisy chain so i've got input into there into the gps sensor and then this is a temperature sensor okay so 
Again, the GPS is something you probably would not use, um, but I plan to use definitely use these LiPo sensors. And I might put this temperature sensor to use. I've got a burn effects unit that I want to put into one of my tanks, but I want to modify the the uh, fluid reservoir. I want to 3D print a fluid reservoir and I don't want it getting too hot to melt that reservoir. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a temperature sensor onto my burn effects there to warn me if that gets over say 120 degrees or 100 degrees or what, whatever. So I know to, to switch it off so I don't risk um, any damage to my uh, 3D printed parts. So that's one, you know, normally people would throw those on, on your motors and stuff like that. But um, for me, you know, it's going to be much more sensible for me to put it here on my burn effects so I can monitor the, uh, the smoke, well, the, heat, the smoke heater. So there we go. Um, telemetry, if that's important to you. And certainly when I start talking in the next series, I'll look at the firmware running and the insides of, of the tank. Um, uh, but having this sort of system with your radio alleviates the need to have this sort of stuff on your tank control boards if you know if you, you no know point paying for it twice. Anyway, that's it for part one of the advanced look at radios. Thanks for watching.